when they get to that point where 35 years, 95, there's a change, you want to do something else. Most people, when they hit that point in their life, they, they get a Ferrari or they'd have an affair or something. You decided, you know what, I'm going to jump 13,000 feet out of a plane and reach speeds of 200 kilometers per hour. When, when did this enter your head and, and, and yeah. was there a fight involved? It's a great question, great question, Paul. I, I suppose, look, I, I've been I've been driven by intense routine for the greater part of my working life. I've worked for 35 years, broadly in the one organisation. I mean, it, it became different different businesses over the years, but I was I was chief executive of a public company, and that's um, that's a different world. It's it's high end. You're travelling. You're uh, end to end. You live by your diary. You're thinking about on Saturday what we need to do for the next week, so you're getting rev revved up again. And this was this was a chance for me, I suppose, to you know to stretch the boundaries a bit, maybe embrace something different and new horizons. Oh, so, like your wife Neve or your, your your four adult kids? I don't know if any of them should have said no, 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 no. no, no. Go, go have an affair. Delighted. She says Delighted. no, no, definitely not. No, Neve would say a right. lot of things. That wouldn't be one of them. Yeah, and I wouldn't have any desire to either, Paul, just for the record. Right, okay, now that okay. I'm... We'll just put it down on the record now. You on the record. Yeah. <laughs> but then the, the choice of skydiving, it's, it's, quite, you know, it's quite an extreme... I suppose it was on the bucket list when I was, when I was young. Right. Do something wild. Now, maybe for some people skydiving isn't wild, Paul. Right. It's, it's par for the course. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still like 59. I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably young. But um, you probably wouldn't do this in ten years' time. So, was there a lot of research to be done? I know, I know that a lot of people do it professionally that they, you know, coach and they can, you know, get you up there and all that. Well, I don't know whether that, that, very that little, was needed. Very right. Very little. Just googling, and it's the Skydive Ireland Club, based okay. in Kilkenny, and it's 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 a tandem. So okay, you great. you have someone who hopefully knows what they're about <laughs> on top. Right. And um, you know there are stipulations around health and that conditions. Sure. Uh, height, weight is a big is a big thing. But okay. essentially they are controlling the tiller. So right. all going well. So you you drop out about ten thousand feet, um, and it looks very very professional. Most people I've a lot of people who I know who have done it who I wouldn't have realised. Actually yeah. did it, ah. and they've really enjoyed it. They found it. So, um, can you can you train? I don't know if you're jumping off the garden shed roof or something. I don't know if there's certain ways to get no, ready. No, not really. No, right. I mean, and I've I've obviously asked asked the obvious questions like that. Um, but it's uh, landing is an important aspect of how, how how you land. So yeah, yeah. Uh, as you as you come into land, you put your feet out. So I okay. What I can understand, but I okay. I'm, I'm doing it tomorrow. So oh, yeah. no no doubt I will I will get all the. Um, all the instructions. Well, as much as it's a, 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 a big jump for you, it is, of course, you know, going to be a, a, a big boost for the Caroline Foundation, in particular, Professor John Crown, who does incredible work in, in research. And it's amazing to think some you were saying some thirty-seven thousand people get diagnosed a year with cancer. In Ireland. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is a big part of a lot of families' lives, and it affects a lot of people's Absolutely. lives. Was was that a kind of a quick decision that, that if I'm going to do this, I'd like to do it for something good? Well, I mean, to be honest, I, I mean, I. I I've supported charities over the years. I've, I've done two Focus Ireland Shine a Light campaigns where you, you sleep out just to shine a light on homelessness. And yeah. Sister Stan Kennedy has done marvellous work. I mean, as you, you know, she's an icon. Yeah. She she started out in the mid '80s, really researching women in homelessness. And look at the organisation she has today. Yeah. I think what Dermot and Helen have done is fantastic. Really professional organisation, mm. a local charity, and it was Neve suggested do it for a local charity right. so do it for, for, for Caroline and um, really very professional organisations they've raised over a million euros um, they've been supported by Science Foundation Ireland and directly supporting what Professor Brown does I think is fantastic I mean the, the numbers the numbers have actually doubled since the mid 90s now the rates have come down because of you know your population growth and aging but right. it's still there's still big numbers like 37,000 I don't know what, what percentage that is and medical research is crucial I mean sure. it's, it's crucial for protection and prevention you know and make people live better quality healthier well, we'll, lives we'll, we'll continue with the, we'll have the, the, the link here to your, your funding uh, uh, page here in this piece and all that we'll yeah. continue to post this now over the coming uh, weeks so I'll just like, remind people that it's there Thank you. And, um, and, and and hopefully we'll raise some money but as before the cameras roll and we just spoke about the um, the fact that we're both of us of, uh, in our 50s and we're both grew up in this area and I suppose just as an, as an aside I don't know because it's 
a constant me with the, with the Great Ones Guide that people there's a great debate between how much change is good and how much change is, is bad and all that. I don't know if you've any sort of feelings about that. Do you, do you sort of say well it's still the same place, or do you say inevitably it it, it has to be new? Because that's great, just... great question. I mean, I'm I was born and reared here as as was yeah. was mum and dad. Um, I I was actually born here in Knockrath, mm. Knockrath, which was a lying in yeah. home. Ah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, up in Church right. Lane. Yeah, I know the name. I know the I'm, yeah. I'm not sure what it is now. Right. Dad. I think it's a swingers club now. Oh. Yeah. So we'll have to return yeah. to where it all began. <laughs> <laughs> but not grass, right. I know yeah, it's a lovely place. Grass, but, yeah. um, and Dad, Dad was a plumber. And yeah. he, he served his time to the father of, I can't remember her first name, Mrs. Murray, who okay. ran the YWCA. Ah, okay. Yeah. Scottish, very Scottish guy. Right. So... And his his mum and dad worked in the Latouche Hotel. Ah, lovely. People and he was years. a fireman as well, and all that you were saying fireman, as well. Fisherman. And so your mum was, was, was with an auctioneer. Ernest she was and, uh, Ernest Ernie Wilson here right. in the main street, and she was yeah. also the uh, duty call officer for oh. for uh, the fire brigade. So whenever you rang the fire service, you rang the bat phone in Nine hey. Road, telling Gary. Well, that's it. Now was Mill Road uh, always uh, like the home? Uh, when you say you were born in Knockrath, was that just? Where you were born, yeah, that's where I was born. Yeah, yeah. no, the, the, always lived the home there. was was, yeah. was um, killing Carrick. Um, I've a cousin, I do Eugene Carrigan. I don't know if uh, you yeah, know Eugene. Yeah, he, yeah. he lives in Black Line. Sure. Uh, Claire McCann lives in in Bridges Park. All ah, right. Uh, my my first job was uh, in the Woodlands Hotel in, hey. in the scullery peeling Glass, potatoes and Glass. doing that. So and yeah. for for me, yeah, Greystones has changed. It, it's got bigger. I love what they what's happened in the marina. I yeah. think it's great. I that's really, the great divide for other people. I really, really that's, do. That's Dylan going electric. Some people sure. want the acoustic Dylan, and some people are happy with the electric yeah, Dylan. Yeah, I others. really think it's, it's wonderful, yeah. and I, I think there's a great sense of community here. Yeah. Still, I mean, you know, it is. It's bigger, it's bigger, more, more people. Yeah. I love it here. But any living thing has the potential, you know, to sort of, you know, to, to go left or right, and you're never yeah. fully sure of where we're going to end up in ten years or twenty sure. years time. And certainly sure. the growth and then the lack of infrastructure is a worry because it's 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 great that there's so many people want to live here and that do live here, but then you're also sure. Sure. facing that possibility of, of certainly so different to when, like when I was growing up and you were growing up, you know, you, you, you pretty much know everybody and it was a small, still yeah. a relatively small in the 70s and 80s, but of course there's joy to be had in, in, in more people and, and, and more opportunities and sure. bigger all that. So I, I don't know whether you, you, you ultimately you, you'd be a, a person, and it might be a bit much to ask, would you be optimistic about uh, about what Grace owns and oh, yeah. carried and all that? Or? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Yeah. things take time. It's it's a process. I, I think the, the essential essence of, of Grace owns, that, 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 that a community, there's a vibrancy about it. So you won't join my, our campaign for no, no foreigners, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we shut off the cameras here. 